Hello everyone and welcome to this EdWeek Teaching Toward Tomorrow Digital Buzz. My name is Jenny McGarra and I am the writer of Teaching Toward Tomorrow and I'm so excited today because we have an amazing guest on. He's a friend, he's an amazing uh, educator, I look up to him. It's the great, the powerful Dr. Rashawn Benedict Richards. Right. Well, actually, you know, I was actually going to start going by Dr. R. Benedict Richards. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Dr. R. R. Benedict Richards. It's a, we were joking. I saw Rashawn recently um, at Apple Camp in San Diego, and I was asking him, you know, how does it feel, uh, you know, being a doctor? And he was joking about his new, his new proper name. Mine's not as good, though, Rashawn. I told you, if I, was, if I were ever to get my doctorate, it would be Dr. M. or J. Misong Megera. And Misong's my middle name. It means a... American pine tree in Korean. It's not as distinguished. I don't know. That's pretty good. But then you've already got like your branding and logo in place. You know, you know what oh, you can make it around. I didn't even think about that. I could, I could just like pine tree up the world. I could get a bunch of those scented car pine tree things. There you go. There's your your presenter swag. <laughs> uh, well, we're not just here to talk about our um, our amazing uh, new titles or lack thereof. Uh, but we're actually here to talk about Rashan, what he's better known for, which is the amazing app, drumroll please, da -da 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 -da. explain everything, yay! So um, I'm sure many of you have seen it before. If you haven't, um, it's this great app. Uh, is Morris Cook the people who you collaborate with? Exactly. So, you know, almost four years ago when I was on the hunt for looking for a certain type of app, um, they were on my list of people who I contacted when I decided, you know what, maybe I should try to make it on my own. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're, they were a smaller team then, and, and they've obviously grown over the past years. So Morris Cook is the company that's based in Poland that, uh, uh, that I ended up partnering with on Explain Everything. Awesome. And can you tell us, like, what's the story? So I know, you know, tons and tons of people around the world use Explain Everything, and um, for many it's their favorite app, you know, educators and even non-educators. It's just fun to play with. So how, what's, the, what's the birth story, uh, the origin story, if you will? Sure. So, I don't know, almost 10 years ago, I was introduced to the process of screencasting, um, I heard somebody speak about it. I think it was probably, it was actually, I think, Alan November, um, who was at, our, at my school at the time. And in order to create a screencast, which is the process of capturing the computer screen output and perhaps having audio narration as well, uh, it required, you know, maybe having a smart board and then a desktop computer and a USB microphone. And um, you also needed some software. At the time, I was using a TechSmith's Jing. Um, and, you know, the setup was a bit clumsy and cumbersome, uh, but I found that when uh, I put my students, and this was a you know fifth, sixth, and eighth grade math classes at the time, um, when I gave them that setup as a way to demonstrate their understanding or the way that they solved certain types of problems, or if they wanted to create a lesson on how to solve certain types of problems, um, they were really engaged. And I don't think it was just the novelty of using the tech, but I think. Um, they liked the way that they were able to see their own thinking, and it also gave me an interesting lens into how they were planning and uh, processing and thinking through steps of, you know, even some pretty trivial uh, types of problems. Like all of a sudden, it was you know a lot more information and interesting thing was coming about about uh, how they learned. So you know, fast forward five or six years, and uh, the announcement of the first iPad came out, and it looked like. Uh, from it, and even when I finally got one, that like, all right, it had the same touch screen pieces that I liked about uh, interactive whiteboards. Uh, it also appeared to have a microphone, so there it goes the USB microphone part. Uh, and it was also, uh, you know, it was it looked like a powerful computing device that could be distributed or more mobile or portable, or you know, it looked like it would be possible to take my once clumsy setup and replicate it uh, in a much cleaner. Uh, way, but the thing that was missing was the software uh, to enable that kind of capture. So I did a lot of research looking for tools that uh, either did exactly what I wanted it to do or maybe were similar, uh, and there was nothing out there like it. And so then, at the same time, I was also starting to formulate my, my doctoral research, uh, and I was interested in this idea of screencasting and uh, assessment and actually formative assessment, looking at 
you know, how can we gain more understanding of how students are learning um, when they're engaged in the process of screencasting. So then I started pursuing, well, how do I make, get an app made? And I had no background, I had a very basic coding experience, but, you know, enough to know how to speak to developers. Um, and so that's what I said before, I started making a list of development shops all over the world trying to find out, well, how much does it cost to make, what's the scope, scale, uh, all of those things. And Morris Cook and, and Piotr and Bart, um, you know, I'd once written a review of another app that they had made, um, and we were in touch because, you know, they would send me promo codes anytime I would do presentations. Um, and so they were on my list of people to say, like, well, you know, what would it take to make this thing? Uh, and then they got really excited about the idea as well. And they were like, well, instead of just, you know, subcontracting a company, would you be interested in, in partnering and doing this together? Uh, and I was like, yes, because uh, for all, many, many reasons it, uh, it sounded good. And so that was, you know, we, we like formed our agreement, I think, in December of uh, 2010 or January 2011. And then seven, eight months later, uh, Explain Everything was born. Oh my gosh, so that's so crazy. So it really just started with, you know, we talk up to our kids about challenge-based learning and, and coding and things like that, and it feels like that this is actually exactly what happened. You had a problem, you found a solution, and then you went out and did research and then built, explain everything came out of that. It, it really started from a need from your classroom. Yeah, and it also came from, you know, to a degree, understanding the limits of what I could do by myself and also recognizing, okay, I do need other people uh, to make this happen. And, you know, it's been really nice with this partnership because uh, we have very, very complementary um, skills, but also experiences. Um, me coming from education, them coming from really understanding software engineering and management uh, and design and all those things. So it, it's been a really, really cool uh, way to work together. Uh, and then the funny thing about this is that you know, even though we started working together uh, almost four years ago or three and a half years ago, we never met in person until just a few months ago at ISTE, and where you you were there as well um, as part of the, yeah. the week long uh, first first gathering of the Explain Everything team. Um, which so it's pretty cool. That also speaks to um, what can be done in a very connected world that you don't need to be in the same room as someone uh, in order to build something together. Can you can you tell us more about what it was like meeting um, your partners from Poland for the very first time? Yeah, you know, so we only communicated through video conference and email, obviously. So I think the biggest surprise was figuring out how tall everyone was, uh, because that was the only thing that was never conveyed or uh, easily <laughs> easily understood uh, through through video chat. So that that was pretty fun. But like, you know, we felt like we we've known each other for a long time. So it actually wasn't. It wasn't strange at all. It was actually pretty like natural. It's like, oh yeah, you know, we've been talking, and you know, I send Christmas cards to them, and <laughs> uh, so it, it 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 felt very very natural and cool. And I think that's also very interesting about um, being able to connect with people and finding out that you can still make form meaningful relationships even without being in the same room. So when you started getting um, getting into the development of Explain Everything, how did it look? What was like the prototype build? Did you did you start on paper? Um, did you start with code? For for those of our students and educators who want to get into app building, uh, what was the process like for you? Um, so it was really helpful. So in our first conversations with me and and Bart and Piotr, um, you know, so they said, well, come up with kind of three or four visual mockups. Uh, and I, you know, I, you can do it by paper, uh, but my actual graphomotor skills are quite weak, so it's much easier for me to get my thinking out uh, digitally and, and using, you know, I just use Adobe Fireworks to, um, you know, create uh, a mock-up of like, well, this is what the main screen will look like, this is what the design screen looks like, this is what a sample pop-out menu looks like. Um, really, really rudimentary, no fancy design. I mean, it was, I could, I could actually... Uh, uh, find some of uh, some of those uh, those quick mockups that I did, um, and then I also created basically almost like in an outline format. Um, here are all of the main features, and then you know indent one level. Um, here's uh, what each function does. Here's what each variation on that function could look like. So you take okay, uh, there's the design screen. Then there's the draw tool. All right, well the draw tool can have 
three or four thicknesses and uh, this many different colors. And so you have to just think about all of those variations. When you first press the draw tool, it just lets you draw, but if you press and hold, then the menu pops out. So you have to start thinking pretty deeply, not just about like, oh, this is what I want it to look like, which is the user interface, but then also what's called the user experience. Uh, and like, how many clicks does it take to get what you need to get want done? And uh, you're always trying to minimize that and, and, and make it simple. You gotta love the economy of clicks. Or I guess on an iPad, it's the economy of taps, right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, your, the iteration of Explain Everything has been kind of amazing, seeing how, how quickly your app has developed over time. Um, like, you, you expanded to Android really fast, the way that you have, I think, you, don't you have, like, a Mac viewer that you can watch Explain Everything? We do. So there's something called the Player app for Mac, where you can, without needing to compress it as a video file, can just watch the, the project file. So, you know, I actually tell people if, you know, to differentiate between publishing to the world versus, you know, just being able to share work. So exporting as a video file and putting it on YouTube or Drive or Dropbox or wherever, um, you know, that's to help ensure that anyone who doesn't have an iPad is able to view and interact with the work. But, you know, if you're in a class and you know that all the students have access to an iPad or an Android, you could share just the project file after something's been created so you don't actually have to wait for it to export. And so that's the same thinking behind the player app that uh, if you've created something on an iPad, you can just share that file and somebody with a Mac could view it. Um, and then we also do have a paid app, which is the compressor, which will actually do the video rendering on a Mac for you. It's insane. I can't. I mean, I just can't believe how fast. Every time I look at Explain Everything, something is new. Um, how often do you go to your your developer partners um, at Morris Cook and say, "Hey, you know, I have this big idea. I, I really want to try this." And they say, "Whoa, slow your roll, Rashawn." Um, do you feel like it's like seventy five percent of the time? It's like, yeah, we could do it. A hundred percent of the time, fifty. What do you? What would you say? Yeah. So, like right now, we have a pretty robust pipeline of ideas, and then we're always revisiting and you know, thinking of, well, how do we prioritize um, the new features? Um, you know, and, you know, and my, my partners are very much equally invested in the ideation portion and, and thinking, well, how can we add things to make it better or how can we improve existing features to make them better? Um, but so you have to also balance that with just ongoing maintenance. So, for example, you know, iOS 8 is coming out and there's a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff included in that. So even just without our own idea pipeline, we also have to look at, all right, well, what is Apple releasing that we can take advantage of or that we need to take advantage of? Um, so all of a sudden, something we thought, like, oh, we're going to be able to do that in August, we're like, all right, that has to take a backseat because we need to get ready for iOS 8. Um, so there's, it's, it's always ever-changing, so we, we have an idea, we, but we can only usually forecast exactly what we're going to do maybe for two months in advance, and then the rest we're always kind of revisiting and, uh, and reprioritizing. So um, I want to I want to ask you if you have any like secret upcoming things for explain everything, but I'm going to save that to the end so that okay. people have to wait. Um, you said before that you might have screenshots of your original ideation phase. Do you have those handy, or is that something that you'd have to dig out of the archive? No, I don't think I have to dig it out. If you can give me uh, give me thirty seconds, I think I could at least pull out one. Yeah, and while Rashawn's looking at that, I'm going to take a little. I don't think it's a commercial break, but I wanted to just share with some folks who are out there watching um, that uh, his, his website, which is actually, it's, a, it's this funny, morriscook.com slash question mark. You could just go to explaineverything.com, and that redirects here. So explaineverything.com. And it's this great website that, first of all, you can find out where to download it um, for iOS, Android, ooh, or Windows. I didn't know that you had a Windows app. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, that's cool. So you have that's for, crazy. You're truly device agnostic. I love it. Um, it has all the little uh, different how-tos here, but what's really powerful that people don't know about are the tutorials, and they're really well done. Um, you know, the, the quality is great, but just how the ideas of what you can do with Explain Everything that I didn't really quite know until I watched all of these. And, I, you know, I'm a, my, literally my title in my job is Digital Learning Coordinator. I'm supposed to coordinate the digital learning for others. And I had no idea you could do all this with Explain Everything. So I was like, ooh, gosh, i got to brush up on my skills. So um, 
all these videos are great. Definitely check them out. If you're new to the app or even if you thought you knew everything, you never know what you don't know. So go ahead and check these great tutorials out. Um, and in a moment, Rashawn's going to do a live demo of something that kind of blew my mind recently that he showed, he showed us uh, at Apple Camp in San Diego. So, but first, uh, were you able to find those screenshots? I'm almost there. Okay. Um, so he's taking a look, uh, for those of you who are just tuning into this part of it, um, he's looking at the original, um, this, I feel like we're looking in the Disney vault of like the first drawing of Mickey Mouse or something yeah. like that. <laughs> so uh, Rashawn's looking for his original um, kind of mock-ups of Explain Everything. And I think that this is really powerful for those of you who either are uh, thinking about app development yourself or who work with kids. And, you know, more and more we're seeing kids as young as lower elementary school developing apps and learning how to code so kind of showing them this process that even really successful apps that we use every day in school like explain everything it started with an idea and a quick sketch um, and a dream and it, it's possible to go from from at point A to point B and and not so long I mean you said that it was a, a nine month <laughs> a nine month process for you from idea to the first the yeah, first like seven or eight months. Yeah, so it's less than it takes to make a human. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm sharing um, a Word document uh, that was probably the first draft that I ever uh, made of the kind of outline. And uh, I'm intentionally keeping it a little bit small because there's some text in here I'm not sure if I want publicly shared. Um, <laughs> but you do see, like, all right, here's, like, a little video or screen, iPad frame. Uh, do you see that or not yet? Yeah, yeah, we could see it. Okay. Um, and then uh, you'll see that there's also like the uh, the bullet outline uh, of what I want, and like right here. I mean, this you can see like this is the project home screen, and obviously it didn't look exactly like that. But visualizing enough of the concepts, so you're like, all right, when you launch the app, you choose uh, a project or you create something new, and then obviously it it became something else from there, um, and then whatever details I couldn't explain visually, that's what I would put uh, in the bullets. Wow, that's so, it's, it's really interesting. You can definitely see um, how, how it evolved from like, you know, a SketchUp and then where it is today and all the different buttons that we have. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, it looked really PowerPointy at first with all of the slides on one side, I guess, and now yeah, you have yeah. that down at the bottom. And right, and that's like, you know, that, at the time it's like, oh, I didn't think about, oh, a pop-up to organize the slides, but then, then like Bard and Piotr were like, well, you know, it doesn't have to be always visible. And then we're like, all right, so we will hide it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah think outside yeah. Think outside the screen. Exactly. <laughs> all right, awesome. So um, at this point, Rashawn, if you wouldn't mind, could you share with us um, some, some, some different ways? So you, we've seen screencasting apps. There's so many different ones. We're not going to name all of the other screencasting apps out there, but um, Explain everything really, again, things outside of the screen. I think that um, what's really powerful about uh, your app is that it, it really encompasses different types of media. It brings in the web, it brings in video, but um, what you showed me kind of brought that like fourth dimension of holy cow into what you can do when you think about your ability to annotate media. So um, if you don't mind, I'm going to shut up and let you show your screen. Sure. So hopefully you can see my iPad uh, at yeah. this point. And yeah, and uh, like I've said about screencasting and, and the apps and choices out there, I mean, I think the right tool for you is going to depend on your context. So I don't always know everybody's context. So to say, like, oh, you know, choose us over others, you know, you'll rarely ever hear me say that. You know, I'll make recommendations. But I do think that we, our intent has always been, like, let's make a tool that's the most adaptable to any situation. Uh, and any need and any learning goal and any type of learner. So that's the driving force behind uh, all of our decision making uh, and we like to be pretty articulate and clear about that. So, you know, the thing that, I think there are two realms of use of the app that I'm starting to see more now that it's in its uh, almost third year. It's August 19th is its birthday. Oh. Four yeah. days until it's three years old. Um, so initially, a lot of people were using it for uh, all right, a quick screen capture to to show understanding, or I'm going to make a a voiced over PowerPoint as a as an online lecture or a substitute lecture. I'm making a quick tutorial as part of a flipped classroom, and I think those have been very accessible entry points for people. 
But now what we're seeing uh, are, the, again, like these two realms. So one is uh, starting to really make use of the animation possibilities uh, and do some really, really interesting things. Uh, and then the second, uh, which was part of my original intent before, was being able to set up a template or like an almost an interactive worksheet type thing um, so the teacher would set it up and then share it to students to work with. So kind of doing some of the legwork and design work. Uh, let me do that ladder example first. Uh, L-A-T-T-E-R, ladder. Mm -hmm. um, so like, you know, sort these shapes. So I'm pretending I'm a teacher and I'm creating a little uh, template that I'm going to share with students. So my in instructions are short these shapes. That's not very good. Um, by uh, size. Terrible example, sorry. It's okay. Two is here. So, <laughs> and I'm going to draw some shapes. Okay. I didn't even say least to greatest or what. We'll, we'll see how students in, uh, interpret it. Yeah, there you go. That's part of the learning. Okay, so imagine, you know, I'm the teacher and I'm just setting up an activity that I want all my students to engage with. So what I can do is uh, I'm going to take this and save it. But this, this project now, uh, and like I can put it in my, my Dropbox, like I can export this project file. And then, any, and imagine that I shared the link or shared the, I have a shared folder with my class. They'd be able to then look for, there it is, um, this project and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to open it and explain everything. So they'd actually be able to open their own copy and work with it uh, right from there. And I'm seeing some really cool uses of that. Like, for example, and I'll have to find the citation of the teacher. I don't want to steal credit for his or her work without proper credit. But I saw this, like, really cool assignment developed this way where, oh, they've got a video, they've got some questions, and they've got some prompts like staged across these four slides uh, of what the student is to do. And what he or she did was just post a link to this project file on the course website, and then the students would open it on their iPad, interact with it, uh, create their screencast, and then send it back to the teacher. Um, and I'm seeing that as a really cool and interesting workflow, kind of, of a new type of interactive assignment design um, using the app. I that um, makes sense? What? Yeah, our teachers love doing this. We actually have some teachers now who do uh, the shared reading concepts in elementary school where normally you have a text and you make you know photocopies of the text and you read and do an interactive reading with your kids. Um, but they do it through Explain Everything now. So there's a different paragraph on each page and they'll say, all right, we're on page two and the kids hit play and they can hear the teacher read the first part of the paragraph with fluency and then they jump into the second half and they read that aloud and create a screencast and then annotate the text and talk back to the text. So they've made like a two-way read aloud um, shared reading bonanza. It's a fluency assessment. It's differentiated. Um, the teacher is sitting on the rug with 30 kids with iPads and they go next page. They're all on the same page and um, the kids sometimes put in little videos into it. So it's, it's really incredible um, how that's transformed this one teacher's shared reading block and that's how they do all of their reading now. Oh wow, that's great to hear. Um, Ooh, what, what's this fraction? Oh, so, so I'm actually, this is for uh, a special project where I'm developing an, an iTunes U course and uh, I'm, I was trying to come up with a clever uh, thumbnail graphic for it and it's the course uh. I'm designing is about fraction equivalence and comparison so you know I've also seen especially people with better more artistic skills than me uh, also just using uh, the app uh, from a design standpoint because you can do some good sketches but you could also create something in like an, I, an app that has you know pretty sophisticated design and drawing tools like paper uh, and bring that content right in to explain everything and that's something else that's uh, pretty neat so let me let me show you what that workflow could look like because I'm gonna use this as an example so I'm actually going into paper by 53 and I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna draw this is supposed to be like a TV set does it look like a TV? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I like some of these things. Uh, they've got these pretty elegant tools that, uh, oops, got to correct somebody's test. Um, <laughs> so I've just tried to draw a little TV. 
and I'm going to export this uh, to my camera roll, and I've actually chosen not to include the background. That's a feature um, there. And I'm going back to my project. I'm going to make a new slide. And now I'm going to add my TV here. I'm just going to crop it. Done. And this is, this is something I didn't know you could do either, is crop it and explain everything. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to be improving uh, what you can do on that photo editor screen pretty soon. So here's my little TV screen. I'm also going to now add a video um, that I took yeah, a couple of days ago. And so now what I can do is I'm actually going to put or attempt to put myself inside the TV. Let me just bring that to the front. And then I'm going to group those together with a triple tap. So now I've, oops, now I've got this TV uh, with me in it, and I think I should be able to show myself playing. So yeah. all of a sudden, I've created a little TV. But then I could go even further and say, all right, I'm going to create a cliff with some water and a goldfish. Oh, no. And, uh, you know, I could create an animation where this TV, let's pretend it has legs and arms. <laughs> uh, and if I wanted to, you know, I could hit record. If I do it now, it might actually feed back volume. Uh, but yeah. I could make my TV fall and fall into the cliff. Or, you know what I could do? Is I could add some wheels. Uh, you know what? Let me I'll duplicate that wheel. I don't know if you just saw I did a duplicate feature, but I could set these to rotate. Oops, that's too fast. There we go. I don't know. Do you see the ro rotating? Yeah, I didn't know that you could do that either. <laughs> yeah, so you can do that. So now I'm going to actually add this to my. Oops, I missed. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so now I can make this car. Hey, there I am. Okay, there I'm waving, and then ah, uh, so yeah, and you know I just did that in what a matter of uh, a couple of minutes, but yeah. we're starting to see people do some really cool uh, tricks with animation. And we're going to be adding some more features either to uh, a future update or another big big version update. Um, to let you do even more stuff with the animation. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I thought I knew you were going to do the video thing, but the wheel rotating thing just like double blew my <laughs> mind. Holy cow. So, um, okay, so we just have a couple, like a minute or so left. So do you have any, any updates or anything that we should keep our eyes open for the future, or can you not share that? Is that super NDA? So, I mean, I can share. We're going to be, you know, we've one thing we've been continuing to do is add more uh, language translations and stuff to the app because we've been getting more and more uh, global. Um, Feature-wise, the long-awaited redo button uh, is on the horizon. Woo! Uh, we, we think we've figured out a way to make it work without you know, breaking everything, but we have to be sure. We, it's funny, as we've added more things, like you add something and all of a sudden you forget, like, oh my gosh, it just broke 10 other things, so we're constantly <laughs> needing to go figure that out. Um, so it sounds so simple, like the redo button, uh, but it's actually pretty complicated when, when you start to dig into the structure of how the recording and object hierarchy works, um, and also understanding, like, well, what makes an iPad crash? Because <laughs> we've learned a lot about what makes an iPad crash. I think we can provide many use cases for how people's iPads <laughs> crash when they, when, they, when they really push um, this app to, uh, to what it can do. Um, you know, future things that we're looking towards is um, you know, how do we make it easier for people to collaborate? And uh, I won't say much more than that, but it's something that we've uh, we we've pretty sure that we 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 found a, a magic way uh, to do oh this. Oh my gosh! And uh, I, and that hopefully we'll have more to share uh, coming this fall. Um, you know, there there are a lot of like little feature thing, you know, things that happen behind the scenes. Like we're always trying to make like the drawing algorithm smoother and nicer. We're always trying to make it much uh, the compression take less time. Um, and as the iPad hardware has gotten better, that also has gotten better uh, on the on the device itself. So some of those things aren't as flashy, uh, but we're constantly working at it. It would be very easy for us to be like, all right, here's the app one and done, and you know we're not going to do anything. But we 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 reinvest a lot of our time and resources back into. Uh, making it better and making the existing functions 
uh, work out well. Well, Rashawn, thank you so much for sharing this with us. We, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I, when you said the magic collaborate word, um, I'm so excited. I'm going to be like refreshing to see if there's an update every day this fall now. I can't yeah. wait. So uh, thank you for sharing your morning with us. And um, if any in the comments, maybe Rashawn will be able to see it all forward if I see any questions over to him. But um, again, thank you so much. Thank you for, for continuing to make this app better for our kids and our teachers. And uh, we can't wait to see what's next. All right. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.